All right, y'all. Welcome back to Elon, your hero. And this time we're gonna be talking about the church is making people vote for Donald Trump, calling him God, chosen, and the new Messiah. How many of you guys was under pressure, uh, being pressure of who to vote for, who you should vote for if you're a true Christian, and all that other type of stuff? Even though you heard all the many sins that people deal with from the day to day, all the different sins and some worse sins, there's completely terrible that Donald Trump done and that his supposed wife has done. Yeah, all the stuff that they would bring up in scripture and tell people not to do. All the stuff that people have problems with that I mean, there's some pretty gross things, and but the church gets on to you guys. They go on to each and every one of you, telling you not to do just specific things that Trump's doing, not to do the specific things that Melania's doing, not to watch the specific things that Melania does. Yeah, they tell you guys not to, not to pay attention to that stuff, to the stuff his wife does, and. Yeah, they tell you guys to leave that stuff alone. That you need to repent. You're going to go to hell. But yet, here they are in the churches telling each and every one of you who you should be voting for. And they tell you to vote for the new Messiah, the God chosen. You know how many hands, how many, how many Christians and hands they, they showed on TV during his election? Like, during his election, everybody was like, they showed hands and hands of people, of, of Christians, hands going up, hands in the air, either. I mean, they're all the people just giving the energy to the universe to select them. Or to God, to God is Bible. Anyway. Well, let's talk about that. Let's just make sure that I get through all these points. Alright, so, right after he became president, what happened? What did he do with the pipeline after he got in office and the effect it had on Indians and the people of residence? It was pretty large. There was tons and tons of people that they didn't want the pipeline cut. I mean, they didn't want it made in the first place. Not cut, I'm sorry. They didn't want the pipeline made. Yet, yeah, here they were. You know, right after he became president, he did that. And then right after that, I see a commercial. Right after he signed that, the moment he became president, and he went ahead and made those pipelines and signed that, right after that, I, right after that, I saw a commercial while I was at work. And it specifically said, um, it's crazy how these people don't have water. They don't have water. We need to donate water to these people because they don't have it. So take a good look at what the government does. Take a good look at what it does. So what you see on TV really isn't what you think it is because what happens is that they go and make a situation and then they go get you to donate to that situation. So the money obviously isn't going to them because years and years of donations should solve a problem. But it never does. That they just keep asking you to freaking donate. It just makes no sense. <clears throat> okay. So yeah, as of now, I don't know what the, what they're doing with the pipeline with them. I, I suppose, well, they the situation is lost. I mean, I don't, you know, how do you fight, you know, people with guns and the army and everything else when you're trying to do things in a civilized way. But anyway, one of the reasons why during this time. Right back in November 2016, I stopped going to church. I asked God, now I walked past the church, and the church I used to attend, and I asked God, I said, God, show me a shooting star. You're capable of anything. Show me a shooting star if you want me to go back in. He didn't. He did not want me to go back in. No shooting star anywhere, and I stayed outside for quite a while. Just to give him a chance, and he never did, so. 
went back in. I was like, all right, next thing I know, that's what I found. Also, uh, there was also another church who was, uh, there is uh, some kids, I don't know, teenagers, what, 16 year olds, and they got their license and everything. And what they was doing was, they was playing, well, I see a falcon, awesome. What they was doing was, was they was, they was playing loud rock music, all right? And what happened was that the pastor told the kids who was playing the, the, the uh, rock music to never come back to the church because they were ruining his business. That's what he told them. He came running outside, told these 16-year-old kids, you're ruining my business. Never come back to this place. Okay, wait a minute. But I thought your main job is to win sinners over to your, you know, so-called denomination, which is weird funny how they say that. Because when you do something, you want to be nominated. You want to be nominated for your hard work, nominated for your prizes, nominated for the things that you do, nominated for the things that you create, inventions, stories, books, awards, and when you want to be, you know, nominated in sports. But for when you go to church, you're entering into a denomination. You're being denominated, demoted. You're having your awards taken away, your position taken away. I guess even some of your rights taken away. So, if you enter to a denomination, you're being denominated. Whatever you was nominated for, it don't matter no more. It's all Satan. It's all the devil. You're being denominated. Demoted. Instead of being nominated, denominated. That's what's so messed up about that. Now, now when you're in the church, people, they did, you know, when I was growing up, you know, in the church and the church system and all that, and the church programming. You know, turn out the cheek. Don't worry about them. Your your stuff is in heaven. You know what happened? People walked all over me because I was a Christian, and I had to let them because I was a Christian. Make fun of me, call me gullible, call me names, all that stuff. The amount of freedom that you feel when you get out, and after you read that Bible. Come on, for real. All the loud noises just because I'm making a video. It's never like that. I'd be doing completely something else and it'd be totally quiet all the time until I make a video. But, yeah, when you're a Christian, you gotta let people walk all over you. Because <coughs> you gotta turn your cheek, not to worry about things. Even the Bible says stuff like, Obey your governments and all that type of stuff. Don't ask no questions. He says it in there. And it's pathetic. You know, and I don't get why, you know, they don't let you go. I mean, I do. I get why they don't let you go to other churches because different churches treat different things to denominate you. Nominate of your, your, your standards that you've been brought up to denominate you. Because you're going to learn different things at different ones. Alright. Because, you know, you're going to get bits and pieces of the Bible that doesn't make sense with another church. And it's not going to make sense with another church. And it's just going to, you know, twist your head around. And that's usually what happens. Anyway, thanks for watching.